if few there be that find it, and many that think they're going there and are trying to go there don't in the end get in, and only few find it, and the way is hard. Look, by default, if few there be that find it, then what? What's the opposite? Many don't find it. And if you don't find life, what do you find? Death. It says destruction. So if many find destruction, and few find life, is it not likely that among this group that I talk to right now, is there not a great possibility that many of you are going to find destruction and only few of you are going to find life? Is that not consistent with what Jesus is teaching there? Is that not concerning? Do, does the word destruction just kind of go over your head and through your ears and off your back as just a light matter? Let me describe destruction for you. You know, Jesus gave us the most vivid descriptions. He called it outer darkness, a place of torment, a place of weeping, gnashing of teeth, a place of fiery furnace, a place where the smoke of the torment of the people that are there go up forever and forever. It speaks about the fury and the wrath of God the Almighty. Do you know why there's weeping there? Do you know why some of you will weep there? Some of you that hear my voice will indeed, I have no doubt, weep in that place for a variety of reasons. But one of them is this. Listen, you know the devil fell. The devil was an angel. The devil and a third of the angels of heaven fell into sin. And do you realize this? When they fell, that was it. Their judgment was final. Do you realize you were not the first to sin? The devils, the demons, they sinned first. God never sent them a savior. God never sent them a way of escape. God never sent them a remedy for their sin. God never offered them hope, never offered them heaven, never offered them good, grace, mercy. They were damned. And in fact, we're told that the lake of fire was created exactly for them. Do you know one of the reasons that some of you will weep in destruction the way you will weep? Can you imagine if if as a demon, you find yourself in the lake of fire, the fiery furnace where there is fire and brimstone and torment for your sin. Can you imagine if you were them and you find yourself there? There will be sorrow on their part. There will be torment. There will be pain. There will be anguish. There will be sighs and groans and wails. But can you imagine if you find yourself there? After God sent His Son into this world to save sinners, can you imagine if you find yourself in the lake of fire when there was a way offered you out? When a Savior came into the world who specifically came to seek and save sinners, when mankind was given a remedy for his sin, and not only that, but you remember back to that time when people came from this church on the east side of San Antonio and they came and they told you about Christ and they showed you the way out and they told you the gospel and they said that if you would flee to Christ, you could find salvation from your sin. Can you imagine what weeping? It says weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know what gnashing of teeth is? Can you imagine? I had it. I had it. It was, it was set right there before me. And I said, no, I want my sin. I don't want Christ. I want my sin. I'm still young. I want sex. I want the fun. I want the party. I want what this world has to offer. And I don't want Christ. I'm going to go drink deep of this world and maybe sometime else I'll take care of that. And all the time God was saying that was the day of salvation. 
This day is the day of salvation. And you passed it by. And now you're damned. And you're in that lake of fire. And you had it. It was right there. It's like Christ said. He offers you drink. And He says, if you will, He says, drink the water of life. Drink it freely. Freely. Come take it. If you will, whosoever will, come and drink. And you will grind your teeth at the thought, what a fool I was. And you will weep. Not only because you are a fool, you will weep because eternity will be placarded over everything. Your torment isn't for a moment. You know what it's like when we get sick? You know what it's like when we get injured? There's always this hope. God created our bodies to heal. Well, I won't be sick for long. I won't have to suffer for long. Even if I'm experiencing this pain, the pain goes away. You get the cut, you get the break, you get the scratch, you get injured, the sprain. It heals. But in hell, there is no healing. It's forever and forever and forever and forever. Few there be that find it. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. <laughs> 